you guys have of course been around already from uh, 97 but could you give me our listeners like a 101 about your band so who and what is subterranean masquerade yeah i take this one um basically subterranean masquerade is a musical project i've created long time ago in 97 um back when i was a very extreme metal uh, person and i wanted uh, to have this group that i can uh, get my artistic uh, freedom and vision into into form and we didn't do much until 2005 basically um i did a cover version uh, for peter murphy and then released an ep uh, somewhere on 2004 and in 2005 we released a full-length album I named Suspended Animation Dreams. And making this album was so difficult for me that I decided I want to take a break from music and I didn't do anything in the subterranean masquerade for another seven years. So if you want to sum it up, basically the band started a long time ago, but it's only until 2012 or 13 that we actually started to be an actual group with a rehearsal and a steady lineup. And uh, since then, we released, uh, this is already our third full-length album, Mountain Fever, the one that's coming out. So you can see there is a pattern of an album every three years, uh, more or less. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, yeah, uh, from the album, uh, there's the new video, Ascent, that also kind of introduces your band. Uh, it's basically footage of you on tour, so uh, from which places is this footage from and, you know, taking account our current situation, how is it to see these images now? Really? Well, we, the, I think it's about five or six countries. It's from our latest uh, 2019 tour. We did it with the Orphaned Land and it's from France and Spain and Germany. And could it be Slovakia? Maybe, and Belgium and the Netherlands, a lot of places with, with a lot of shows, with a lot of people that it was for most the first time seeing us, maybe the second time for some. And um, what we wanted to do with the video clip is actually bring back these memories. We had we had a filmographer with us uh, all the time, cinematographer. Um, his name is Yolon Shkori. He went with us through the entire tour. Uh, we're gonna put out later this year, we're gonna put a documentary about this tour as well. And uh, we just wanted, because of COVID, we just wanted to do something nice for all the people that were there and that were supporting us since then and they're following us. So we put out this, this video clip with with all the live footage and yeah we're looking at it right now and it seems like a time machine right okay. it's been a very long time for us we are trying to to book the next tours now for mountain fever and yeah let's you know we see this thing i watch it every couple of days and i, I really miss this i i guess everyone missed this though i'm not special yeah Yep. Yeah, the new album, The Mountain Fever, it's coming out in May, actually. So, so what can you tell me about that album? What kind of music are we going to hear? It's everything all put together. It got um, extreme metal and progressive and a lot of hard rock. And everything is wrapped in that kind of a perhaps a pop production because it's very grand and very well thought of. We went into the studio and we spent there a long time making this album. And actually we put attention on every very little detail. So everything sounds really, really fine. Like you hear in, uh, in blockbuster pop albums, but you get the good production and then a very rock metal kind of feel of songs great vocals and a lot of guests and a lot of musicians playing and we got a vast variety of different instruments uh, coming from the classical to the middle east to the to the brass and um, 
it's just a mix of everything, but kick ass. I think, I think it's very important to mention that what we do besides doing prog metal is that we are uh, infusing world music with everything that we're doing. So the latest uh, two albums before I joined, I just joined the band a few years ago. This is my first album with the band before that, uh, um, Kietel Nod, who's from Green Car Nation and uh, Tristania was the singer. And the band is filled with um, Middle Eastern violins and Balkan sections, brass sections and uh, Indian ragas. All of it is in the history of the music of the band. And I think that now with the new album, what we did, uh, we were trying to infuse it even more and keep a very solid song structure with a lot of different uh, ethnicities and a lot of different flavors, um, a lot of world music within it. So for the people that are going to listen to this album, it's very important that you don't expect a traditional progressive metal album. I think it's more about it's progressing in the way that we we're orchestrating the music, and I think it came out very special. Okay. We're very optimistic about it. We're hopeful. Uh, with all these uh, different elements, uh, how is the writing process for you? How do you write music? I um, I write most of the music, and um, I deliver the guy from the band the full demo. It's basically the music, the very first sketch of the music. And then we start working on it together. Usually the first thing that happens is that we send it to drums. We start working on the groove. And, you know, to change my VST programming into a real drummer. Um, this album was played by Matan Shmueli of Orphanland, as well of, as any of the other previous albums. So it's a great drummer and a great drummer to work with. He always come up with some uh, really original ideas and has his uh, trademark. So we get the groove first and then we send it, I send it to Shai, which is the keyboard guy, and he starts writing um, arrangements. He do um, the arrangement for the brasses and the strings. And uh, he write the keyboard parts and uh, some of the synthesizer. And we send it to Vidi, which writing the vocal melodies. And we all bringing in some kind of ideas. Okay, let's make this part longer or shorter and more extreme and change it. Because this album, we actually worked on it as a full band. And everybody had a say, and we did it all together. Pretty much, right? Yeah, Tom, Tomar is like our director. He has the vision. He knows what's the next album, how it's going to, how he wants it to sound like. And he is helping us, we all bring our own ideas and then Tomer is just meshing it up, filtering it up. We're all talking about it, a team effort. So Tomer here is, is producing us and taking us to new places every time. It's really, really cool. It's really cool. It's really cool, man. Cool. So with all these elements, you know, the brass sections and uh, violins and so on. So what kind of uh, operation was the recording? Um, very complicated and uh, sensitive. <laughs> it took because us a year. It took us a year to finish it up. Um, we did the drums. We did in Fascination Street in Stockholm. And then uh, the rest of the music we recorded in, in Israel uh, between uh, Tel Aviv to Golan Heights on the Syrian border. We wrote a lot of stuff over there. Um, a lot of musicians took, took place, uh, took part. And uh, Tomer and Shai were just driving around studios, meeting the musicians and, uh, and doing it together. A lot of layers, um, it took some time. The pre-production, we took a lot of time. And, uh, but I think that this is the thing that makes the album very uh, punct. We think that uh, it's, it's, it's to the point. Uh, it's less jammy than other stuff. Um, and it's, 
yeah, I think it was it was it was difficult, but once you have the the parts and you have the melodies and you know what people are doing, then then the instrumentalists that we chose, they just they just made it easier for us after the pre-production. Okay, uh, you already uh, we already talked about the music video and how it's almost like nostalgic to see footage from concerts. So how is it to now uh, re to release music in this time and you know try to plan a tour after the album? Well, the touring part, the touring part is uh, is honestly. Uh, very challenging, very, very challenging. Um, we're hoping it's going to be solved soon from our part, at, at, at least. We're trying also to book a show here in Israel. Things are going very slow um, on that department just because, you know, people don't know what's going to happen. Um, but on the... On, on the other on the other hand, uh, besides you know the traditional band mentality of doing an album and then doing a tour and then going with this round, we actually had much more time now to discuss and understand what is it that we want uh, with the album and uh, with creating community and um, making the audience part of the band, not only in the live shows but also, just as a concept and as a community. And I think that now it was a little bit scary in the beginning to think, okay, we're gonna put this one out with no live dates. We have one live date now in June in Maximum Rock Romania. We're gonna play there uh, with uh, our friends Orphan Land and with Epica and Therion and Devin Dows. And it's gonna be cool. It's a, it's a small festival, so it can exist and it's really cool. Um, I think everything that we're going to do from now on online until the album is coming out and after the album is coming out um, is, is done with a lot of patience and a lot of strategy. And there's a good feel, there's a good feel, right? There's a, Tomer, it, there's a good yeah. energy about releasing it right now. There is no fear anymore. Yeah. We feel, feel good. We waited a long time for this uh, moment to come. And we kind of uh, moved along with, uh, with the news and seeing what the other bands does to realize what is the, the right timing for it. And when we decided, okay, uh, May is going to be the right time, it's after we kind of look around and saying, okay, there is a slight chance of touring around early 2022. <laughs> So, you know, I'm yeah. being uh, a little optimistic, but I think this is pretty much being reasonable. And it's a, it's a good time. It's a good time for it to happen. And uh, we, we're hoping, uh, you know, that things will happen eventually. Yeah, we are very happy with our new record label, with Sensory Records. We feel that we have a home and they really give us um, a good wind on our on backwind, how do you say it in English? I don't know, but they, if we were a boat, you know, so. Yeah. Wind in sails. We feel, we feel good, we're optimistic, yeah. Okay, talking about community, uh, I'm interested to know, how is the scene in Israel? Um, I mean, maybe, of course, in a normal situation, how is the metal scene in there? The metal scene in Israel is, very diverse. It's not a big one, but um, there are shows all the time. We have the bands from all over the world coming. It's it's already a usual thing. Um, a lot of death metal, a lot of death metal going on right now. That's very trendy right now. Uh, the extreme scene is very, very big. Um, but still, the venues are kind of underground uh, unless you are doing a very big thing and then building a local festival and stuff like that. This happens a lot. Um, 
we're also part of a, a niche within the Israeli scene because we're doing this, uh, um, we come from the Oriental influences. So we're here with, uh, with Orphaned Land and Melchesh and events such as these. Um, there's a lot of punk here, actually. I think there are a lot of good reasons to have punk in Israel, some protest, that's good. Um, and I think that during the last years, the value of production is going higher and higher. People really study because we cannot, not all the musicians can afford and go and play and record in huge studios like in Europe and people teach themselves how to do it. And I think that there's a big peak now. And I think that in the next couple of years, there are going to be few more Israeli bands that will start touring and will put out music that is very well produced. Yeah, Tomer, how would you, uh, how do you see, for example, uh, when Subterranean Masquerade was founded in '97? Uh, so, uh, how has how was the scene back then, and how how has it changed over this long span of time? It's it evolved when I I I'm as you can you know I've been I've been around for a long time in the metal scene and I've been there uh, when Carcass uh, came and did the show for Outward and I've seen uh, the gathering during the show with Always and uh, where the metal scene was big and mainstream and you could have uh, bands coming here like Iron Maiden and uh, do concerts that maybe not have, uh, you know, like a big park, uh, 50,000 people, you know, a lot of people, but it was a regular scene that's working all the time. And then something happened in the early 2000s. Most of the people that used to listen to extreme music traveled to India and started doing LSD. And they came back listening to trance music and believing God. <laughs> so... <laughs> So all the, all, the, all the old bands kind of disappeared and with them also the venues. And from 2000 until 2005 and six, the scene was kind of on a lo-fi. And only in the past decade, it was developed again and a new, gener a new generation of people came in and something happened with the open market, you know. Before it was a big thing to go to a festival in London or in Amsterdam. But today you can travel very easily. You can see everything on YouTube. You can listen to everything on Spotify and everything is very accessible in the digital age. And obviously it's come out with a lot of uh, new audience that want to listen to music and they get attracted to it and everything is, is there for them. So I, I think right now the scene is, is more evolved than ever before. And it has something to do with technology, obviously. What do you think, Vidi? I think you summed it up great. Oh yeah, better than me. I I did I didn't see Carcass playing hard work. I think I was eight years old. I've I've seen Biohazard playing with uh, with Punishment in a in a club with two hundred people. It was insane. Back then, you could you felt like you are a part of it. Like if there was something I don't know. It wasn't underground. It's just so simple and basic. And I used to send. Uh, the envelopes with letters to my favorite artists and with stamps. And I used to get the envelopes back and there was, there is something magical in the whole underground uh, thing. And I think that with the internet and everything that is so open for everybody, we kind of lost it a little bit. We got some other stuff. And as you can see, I like vinyl and CDs and I'm an old school guy, but um, I guess I'm a rare bird in this uh, world uh, today, at least in Israel.